Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Black Widow Venomous number one. This is a new book from Marvel Comics. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. Uh, this book is written by Erica Schultz with art by Luciano Becchio, David Correll, and Rochelle Rosenberg on colors, letters by Ariana Meher. Uh, in this book, we're going to see Natasha Romanov, who was trained from childhood as a Russian assassin uh, and a spy for the government, in the Red Room. The solution with this life, Romanov, of course, eventually defected to the United States, where she's put her deadly skills to use at the service of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, and others. Now, recently, Nat bonded with a young symbiote, which granted her a new uncanny abilities in addition to her formidable deadly skills, but the bond is new, and she's still being tested. So I missed wherever that happened. I think it's probably the previous series with Hawkeye, uh, where uh, Black Widow acquired this symbiote. So I'm not really familiar with what's going on there. But the book gives you a really nice summary at the beginning, which I just kind of read over. Uh, and in this issue, you'll see that the Widow's bite is venomous. Natasha Romanoff, infamous spy known as the Black Widow, didn't go look to bond with an alien symbiote. But a good spy works with all the tools available to her. And when one of the most powerful and versatile weapons in the universe lands in your lap, you take it. Now she just needs to figure out how to work with a weapon with its own drives and desires, redefining Widow's relationship with her symbiote and setting the stage for her appearance in the Venom War. So this is a one shot that really is a primer for not only Black Widow, but a little bit of what's coming up in Venom War. So really interesting stuff. I I was very excited to get into this. I'm a big fan of Erica Schultz. Uh, so figuring out how we got here and what this is going to lead to was really what this issue was all about. Now, Luciano Vecchio does a really good job with showing a lot of really dark but uh, really dynamic action. Uh, I think the Black Widow books always require uh, a little bit of style and a little bit of flair uh, when it comes to the fighting. But now with the addition of the symbiote element to it, like we also get some kind of like almost like little horror tinge to it, which is really fun. It's a it's a very interesting tone for a Black Widow book. Uh, we're used to seeing the spy thriller, uh, but adding this extra layer of just like the kind of a little bit of maybe body horror. You'll see when we see some of the preview art. Um, so here we see the Black Widow coming in to Alchemax and she's able like the symbiote helps her like, I guess, make these little spiders or control the spiders. Uh, it's a really interesting effect. Uh, and I just love the way that this is laid out. I love this second page here with all the spiders, just like the swarm as the Black Widow comes in. And then just the the web separating these panels and then also separating the symbiote from the from Natasha's uh, actual body. Uh, so that's really fun. Uh, I really, really like the way that this is all kind of laid out. Uh, and then, of course, as she starts to get into trouble, uh, you know, there's no trouble too big for Natasha. So here we see that even, even though she's got this new symbiote and there's a new things happening there's their relationship is still very fragile and young and immature and they don't really know how to work together so the issue really focuses a lot on doing that uh we get some really fun and interesting cameos which is great uh and yeah we get to see some really cool fights we get to see the symbiote kind of evolve into what it's going to be into into whatever it needs to be for it to be ready for the venom the upcoming venom war which I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty excited to dig into it. Um, let me pull up one last page. Here we have the checklist for the Venom War. So as you can see, it's going to be a lot of issues. Uh, mainly, the main Venom War will be five issues. So of course, we're going to get some, some tie-in books. And I think Marvel's starting to do a really good job at making sure that the tie-ins uh, don't really disrupt the flow of some of the other series. Uh, you know, whether it's like a separate one shot or a separate mini series, uh, it's really fun. But of course, the main Venom book will also be involved in this. Uh, but from everything else, it looks like it's just going to be uh, a few different things. So I'm excited to dig into it. Uh, I don't know how many of the books I'll read. I I read a lot of stuff for Absolute um, or for, well, I mean, I'm reading a lot of stuff for Absolute Power at DC. But for Marvel, I'm also reading a lot of stuff for The Blood Hunt not just the main series. And a lot of it has been a lot of fun, really entertaining. Uh, even the issues that don't seem significant, significantly important, 
to the main story, uh, I think they still deliver and anything. So I'll keep you appraised on that. So stay tuned to the channel. Uh, we'll do, we you know, we'll look over some of that stuff. So. Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Venom War number one. This is a mini series, a new mini series from Marvel Comics. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Al Ewing with art by Ivan Coelho, uh, Frank Dermata on colors, letters by Ariana Meher. Uh, I'm going to be very, very straightforward with you. I'll come back to this page actually because we want to talk about some stuff, but I don't know why they're fighting. I'm not caught up on the current Venom. Uh, but it's the beginning of this like new Venom War, so I wanted to check this out. Uh, let me give you a quick synopsis here. This is the last Venom standing. The Venom symbiote has bonded with both Eddie Brock and his son Dylan at different points. Now both Brocks are going head-to-head -head and determined to be the one true Venom, father versus son in a showdown of showdowns that threatens to tear the world asunder. From heavyweight talent champs Al Ewing and Ivan Coelho, comes the battle for the symbiote like you've never seen before. So now let me go back and pull up that page we're looking at from the credits. Uh, yeah, we have Team Eddie with Bedlam, uh, Tyro, and Wild, and of course Eddie. Uh, and then Team Dylan with Toxin, Red Goblin, Flexo, and then the cat, oh, like it's the symbiote cat, Sleeper. Uh, we also know that Spider-Man is going to be part of this. We also know that the Venom symbiote is running around on its own, uh, which... By the looks of things, if you've seen some of the preview of upcoming stuff, uh, he will definitely bond with Peter once again, uh, maybe before he makes up his mind. Now, this book caught me off guard because it starts at a wrestling match, and I don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, I will say, I think Al Ewing does a really good job of trying to catch up the reader if you haven't been keeping up with stuff. But I don't know why. I don't know the motivations of the characters yet, and I hope that we explore this a little bit more. Uh, I'm not familiar with all the symbiotes, uh, so this one's definitely something that I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. But yeah, it's still a lot of fun. I like all Ewing, and I think this wrestling aspect of it. Uh, I like the idea of this showdown of Venoms, uh, but I'm definitely still trying to catch up on why Venom is, you know, fighting Venom or what what the conflict is within them. So. Uh, let me pull up some of the preview art. Ivan Coelho, fantastic artist. And as I mentioned, we started at a wrestling match. Uh, so, like, what the heck? Like, I don't think these guys are super powered, but they definitely are selling it like it is. You know, you got to live the gimmick. Uh, so that's really fun. But then we do see uh, Venom and Bedlam and his team kind of jumping into the fray. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on exactly. Uh, but the art is very cool. I love the fights. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on story-wise, but like as far as the art, it's pretty fantastic. I'm really, really enjoying that piece of it. Uh, so I think I'll catch up. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, it's always interesting when you jump into a middle of an event and don't know what's going on. I did read the, the Black Widow Venomous one-shot last week to kind of catch up on what Black Widow and how she's going to play a part of this. Uh, and then uh, we do have at the end, the little connected covers of the show, maybe some of the more some other participants that will come into either Team Eddie or Tim Dillon. So stay tuned for that. So if hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for the Uncanny X-Men number one. This is another of the From the Ashes, a new beginning titles. From the X-Men line, let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. The Uncanny X-Men is written by Gail Simone with art by David Marcus. Uh, Matthew Wilson on colors, letters by Clint Cowles. And here is uh, a little preview of the team. Uh, as you can see here in the cover, there's probably going to be more people added to this team. But in this issue, we're going to see Rogue, Gambit, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler. I mean, that's quite a setup already uh, for these X-Men. Um and in this book, Professor X is gone, and a core group of essential X-Men rise from the ashes to face a world without a home and without a Professor X. All bonds among the mutant community seem to be slipping away, and Rogue reluctantly finds herself and a designated hero to bring them back together. But a fearless malignant power is out there hurting mutants, uh, and it has a terrible secret that may destroy what remains of the X-Men. 
Yeah, this is a uh, things after Greco have not been going well for this specific group of X Men. Uh, if you saw any of the little previews, uh, you will have seen uh, the introduction of a new character, Doctor Ellis, um, who is, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what her goal is, uh, but she's just taking over all the mutant stuff. In this issue, we see her walk into the old Xavier mansion, uh, you know, the former school, uh, because she wants to tear everything to the ground. Uh, so let me pull up some of the preview art. David Marcus is a fantastic artist, and I really like his designs, how dynamic his movements feel, specifically here with the coat, uh, and just this ex the establishing shot uh, of the them driving into the school. Just the choices that he makes with the angles as to how to show you know, the school is empty and has been empty for a while, right? There's no X-Men there. There's stuff left behind, little Easter eggs. Uh, yeah, and we don't know what Dr. Ellis wants, but we do know that she commands respect. Um, you know, we also see that they're bringing in the first prisoner as she intends to turn the grounds here into a new prison. Uh, and we also then catch up with the group of X-Men that are working on different things. Uh, I really like the story. It's got a lot. It's got a it's got an event that I was not expecting to see. Uh, like the team just managed to really capture something very emotional. Uh, big shout out to David Marcus and Gil Simone for putting a panel like this together. Like Logan's face is so much stuff. And once you see it in the context of this book, uh, I think you'll be really, really amazed. So yeah, this was a fantastic issue. I really, really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see where we go from here. Uh, this is the cover that I picked up. It's the Jubilee. Uh, they do these like colorless variants or the, you know, the, the simple color variant. So really cool stuff. Jubilee is my favorite, although she was not in this issue yet, which is kind of disappointing for me. Uh, but yeah, very excited to see where this goes from here. So if you have read this issue, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Remember that the X-Men books have the little QR code in the back where you can get. Oh, let me make sure you don't get any spoilers. Uh, where you can see a little bit of extra stuff, right? Uh, make sure to scan that QR code to get that bonus page. It's not integral to the story, but it's a nice teaser of things to come. So, Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Star Wars Darth Maul, Black, White, and Red, number four. This is a new book for Marvel Comics. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Greg Pak. With art by Luca Pisari and Will Sleeney. Uh, we also have inks by Jay Liston and Robert Poggi, along with the artist. Uh, colors by Andres Mosa. And we have letters by Joe Caramagna. Uh, also, really cool cover by E.M. Gist. Um, hopefully, I pronounced all those names properly. Uh, let's talk about this. So, I believe this is the last issue of this uh, Black, White, and Red series. Uh, this little anthology series that I really, really, I love anytime that Marvel does these because we just get to see really cool stories. Uh, this one specifically about Darth Maul, probably one of the coolest characters in Star Wars. Uh, and one of the characters that we always want to know more about. Uh, so that's really fun. So in this, and this issue, where is the darkest side of the force An assassin in the shadows, a forgotten temple, a quest for silence. Why does Palpatine send Darth Maul to an ancient world? And who pray, who pays the price for patience or the lack of it, uh, right? So in this issue, we see that uh, Palpatine has, after, after Maul completes a mission, maybe a little bit more violently than Palpatine would have uh, preferred. I don't really know. It's really weird because sometimes whenever Darth Maul goes like off into a super violent rampage uh it's hard to tell if palpatine is like okay with that or he's on board with that or if he really has some kind of reservations about it so uh but in this case after one of those missions uh palpatine sends small to a place and asks him to wait there until he comes and just sit there in stillness and quiet uh obviously this is probably very difficult for darth maul um I, I really like the art in this. I think uh, the approach to this color palette is really fun and specifically works very well uh, for Sith characters, right? Because of the red. Uh, so that's really cool. 
Um, I like the story. Greg Pak has been writing Darth uh, Vader for a long time now. And I really love that series. And it's just really fun to see him. It's always fun to read Greg Pak on a Star Wars book, specifically uh, some of the villain stuff, because I feel like he just has such nuanced takes on, on, on a lot of these villains. Uh, and as far as the art, it's all really well done. I could not tell you the difference between one or the other, or one, you know, one of the two artists. I'm not familiar enough with their work to really point that out, but it just works, right? Specifically, the violence, the fights, Maul's expressions, those are very important. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this story. So let me pull up some of the preview art here. Uh, as you can see here, Maul completing that first mission, and this is where Palpatine sends him off. Uh, I really like the lightsaber movements, how they kind of flash around. Uh, and then you can just see that Maul drawn in a very imposing way, very physical, right? Very, like it has to be super menacing in order for this to work properly. Uh, so I think that the art team did a really good job there. Uh, and then uh, I love the idea of sending him off to this quiet place, specifically this sequence here in the second page where he's meditating, he's uh, practicing, uh, you know, like maybe some kind of martial arts, just trying to complete his mission as he was told but of course things are going to happen things are going to be he's going to be interrupted by the surroundings so that's where the fun really kicks off so this is a really fun story all re all four stories in this uh in this little mini series were really really great to observe uh, i hope that marvel keeps doing these because i i just want to know more specifically about lesser known characters right characters that we don't get to see as much on the page uh, or on the movies uh, or on the screen as Darth Maul because although he had really big arcs in the animated stuff, his time in the actual films was relatively brief compared to everyone else. So, yeah, really fun stuff. Really enjoyed this one. Highly, highly recommend you go check this out. Whether you pick this up now or you, go, you wait, there's going to be a collection of all four stories with all four issues, so that should be a lot of fun. So... If you have read this series and read this issue, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Everyone remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. And thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.